I swear, they're always racing outside my apartment. Hello everyone and welcome back to Sexy Sunday where we talk all things sex and self-love and today we are talking all about my experience with OnlyFans, the site that shall not be named. In this video and in this series I will be talking about adult content and in detail so please just be cautious of who you are watching this around. Also because of the nature of these Sexy Sunday videos these will most likely be demonetized so please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, comment if you enjoy this, do all the things to boost the ugly algorithm that we all have to wrangle with, and make sure you follow me on other social media. You will find it in the link in the description to find me on all other social media platforms to support me. But without further ado, let's just get into all of your questions about OnlyFans. So, um, and there were ge definitely general themes, so I'm going to just kind of go through the list and hopefully I will answer everybody's questions as I go about it. Okay, let's, um, <laughs> let's just dive right in. So, I'm gonna kind of talk, I mean, I'm gonna talk positives, positives and negatives all throughout, but I want to talk about the positives first, and I'm not honestly going to spend a lot of the time on positives. I think there's a lot of them. Um, however, I feel like especially with OnlyFans, only the positives are talked about. Um, you see it all over TikTok. They're, everybody's like flaunting their money, talking about how easy it is and how quick they got the money and you know how they're able to pay for penthouse apartments with their OnlyFans that they got that they started two months ago. Um, and I'm just gonna say right now a lot of that for the most part is super unrealistic but we will get into that. But the first question I want to answer was just what's it like? So I started my OnlyFans, well, I made my OnlyFans account last February, but it really wasn't until like last June that I really started actually posting to my OnlyFans and actually gaining some followers and gaining some traction on OnlyFans. And to just answer the question of what it's like, it's really fun. I, at least obviously this is my experience, I had a ton of fun on OnlyFans. It is also, incredibly awkward especially if you are new to sex work if you are new to taking nudes of yourself or videos of yourself like all it's it's very awkward and really like weird to get used to like it's weird to to see yourself in those angles and to edit your own our x-rated videos it's really awkward um but the more that you do it the more you get used to it and i think that's kind of like i wanted to start in only fans because as you all know i am very open about my sexuality i am very empowered in my sexuality and so i kind of for me it was like kind of testing myself like seeing if this is something that I could do and I could enjoy because I had never done anything like that before the closest I had gotten to sex work was go-go dancing and that I was pretty decently clothed when I was doing that. It was really a thing that I really wanted to just explore for myself to see if it was something that I enjoy and I do enjoy it. I really did enjoy it. So it's fun. It really does boost your confidence and I don't know it's just it's fun and it's awkward um, and it's uncomfortable all in the same realm, if that makes sense. The next question I wanna answer was just like, what did you learn about yourself? First, I learned just how hardworking sex workers are. That is something, sex work is something that I, especially like a couple years ago, I like had, I didn't know anything about sex work. I was super ignorant when it comes to sex work and you know, doing OnlyFans and not even just doing OnlyFans, but by doing OnlyFans, I, you know, made a lot more sex worker friends, both in real life and on social media. And you realize how how hard it is and how resilient you have to be. And you have to be a fucking hustler. And I mean that in a good way. Like, you really have to work fucking hard. And you have to work really fucking hard all while the internet is trying to ban you completely from the internet. And while all safe ways of doing sex work are 
and you have to do all this while being slut shamed, while being kicked off the internet, while getting death threats, like while dealing with the most adversity. And I'm very much so like a sex work tourist, you know, I came, I saw, and then I left. And I have so much more respect for sex workers now that I've just even kind of dipped my toe into it than I did before. Not to say I disrespected sex workers before, I just didn't understand. And once you're, you kind of start to see it, it's, it's incredible and they are incredible and sex work should be legalized and sex workers should not be getting the treatment that they are, especially in this country. But I also gained a, a, an entire new level of confidence in my body and comfortability with my body and with myself that was really, really awesome. I could really go on about that, but I do really wanna talk about the more nitty gritty details because I feel like those aren't answered a ton or at least they aren't talked about a ton. A lot of people asked about like, can you like audit who sees your stuff? Can you see who is seeing your stuff? Uh, do you know anybody in person that follows you on there? Or did you have any awkward, you know, situations with people knowing you in real life and then following your OnlyFans? Want to answer the first question, no. There's no regulation on if you can see who's subscribing to your page. Um, there kind of is, like there are usernames and if people decide to, you know, upload their real name as their username and upload pictures of themselves, then yeah, you can see. Are people doing that? No, not really at all. I would say the only people that like I, and again, I didn't even know their real name. The only people that I would see like that they had profile pictures were other OnlyFans creators who also subscribed to me. That's kind of it. Every once in a while, and most of them were women. I had a decent amount of female followers on my OnlyFans, which was really cool. So no, you can't, you can't see it. Unless they decide to put their, you know, real name and picture, you can't see it. Did I have any awkward situations where people knew me in real life and followed me on OnlyFans? I had one situation that was a little creepy. Um, it ended up not being creepy, but at first it was creepy. Where somebody, a guy subscribed to my OnlyFans and then said that he used to shop with me. If you guys know, I work retail. And so he said, oh my God, like I used to see you in your store all the time, blah, blah, blah. This is so cool. And he was being really nice, but it freaked me out. It really freaked me out. And I just opened the message and then closed it. So he had seen that I read it. And then a couple hours later, he ended up messaging me and he was like, hey, I'm sorry if that was weird. Like, I didn't mean for it to come across like that, blah, blah, blah. And so I just messaged him back and I was just like, no, it's not weird, but like as long as you can be discreet and respectful, we're good. And he actually ended up like sending me, consensually sending me a picture of his face and being like, this is who I am. I used to work here. I haven't seen you. Like I haven't even shopped with you in the last like year. And he was really respectful, but that was, a little awkward at first because I was just like whoop this person's seen me in public and now they're paying to see my nudes it ended up being okay um, because he was a respectful person uh, it could have not been like that though and that's that's the scariest part is you just don't know the other thing that happened and this was hella awkward was um, my co-workers pretty conservative pretty judgmental family found out because um, I came up on one of her siblings for you page uh, and this was back when I had my old uh, TikTok account and then the sibling proceeded to tell the entire family my coworker had to hear about it and like obviously my coworker doesn't care my coworkers and I are very 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 close she already knew what was going on and she was really supportive of me. I was just like awkward that she had to deal with like her family slut shaming me. Um, but mo mostly I just kind of laughed that off because it's just like, okay, cool. You're slut shaming me. You probably go home and watch porn anyway. So like why, why bother slut shaming me? So those are my two kind of weird interactions with like 
people in person knowing me. It honestly didn't happen much at all that I knew of. But that's the thing is you don't know. You don't know because you can't, unless they decide to come forward, you just don't know. So going off of that, a lot of people asked different security questions. A lot of people asked like, how can you be sure that there's not people underage accessing your videos? And how can you be sure that your videos aren't, or videos or pictures aren't being leaked somewhere? One about the leaking. Okay, hush. So first about people leaking your videos and pictures, that is a risk. It could happen. There's nothing stopping people from screen recording. Um, you don't have the option, like when you're in OnlyFans, you don't have the option to like right click and save or download. You don't have any of that. But like people, people could take screen recordings, people could take screenshots and crop them and post them other places. They will, unless they're Photoshop wizards, they will have your like watermark, like the OnlyFans watermark. Other than that, that's kind of it. Uh, your stuff being leaked is just, a risk of having an OnlyFans. So that is just something that you have to consider when considering starting OnlyFans is, will it end me if my stuff is leaked? And for me, I decided that it would not end me. I mean, I pretty much post fucking, like I post lingerie pics on my Instagram. So like, yeah, it would be a little embarrassing and kind of mortifying for a minute if, you know, other more graphic pictures were, on the internet, uh, but that's the risk I took. And that, that is a risk you have to consider. Um, and then as far as underage people um, having access to OnlyFans, it's not the most secure and I don't necessarily have all the information for this, but it basically all you do is like, when you sign up, you have to sign up with a credit card, so you have to have a credit card and then you basically tick a box saying that you're over 18. So obviously some, you know, underage kid could go steal their parents' credit card and tick that box. They could be underage and on OnlyFans. As far as a creator goes, if you want to create on OnlyFans, you do have to submit your ID. So there's like a little bit more security on the creator end, but also not like the most. Okay, while we are talking about security and other worries, obviously the next question that I got is, are you worried about it affect affecting future job prospects or did it affect your current one? I am lucky enough to work for a company that could not care less what I do on social media. I mean, obviously if I was like a giant piece of shit on social media, you know, things may be said, but as far as like sex work, having an OnlyFans, posting fucking, you know, lingerie pictures on Instagram, let's zoom in. Like my direct boss follows me on Instagram and a lot of, you know, a lot of people that work for corporate with my company follow me on Instagram and they don't care. Um, my company really allows people to be themselves, um, especially outside of work. So I was really lucky in that way, but it definitely did scare me as far as like my future jobs because I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do with my life. I mean, obviously, you know, YouTube and doing social media is something that I would love to do, but the chances of me actually being able to, you know, live and survive off of internet money, unless I continued OnlyFans, which we'll talk about that in a minute, are very, very slim. So, that is something that started to kind of like creep into my brain of like the more that I put out there, the more chances that are chances that it's going to be leaked or that somebody that I really don't want to find out is going to find out. That's another thing you have to consider is like, what if your family finds out? Do you care? Is it going to like ruin everything? Because plan on your family finding out. I know, I know a lot of my family knows. Um, I know my brother knows. I don't think my parents know just because they don't really, they don't know what OnlyFans is, but they wouldn't necessarily care. It wouldn't be world ending for me if my entire family found out exactly what I did. Like my parents would not be fine, but like it wouldn't, it wouldn't really affect me. So I was really lucky with that too. But the whole future jobs thing, like 
yeah, that is scary. But also I kind of, I kind of was just like, well, I have my Instagram. I'm not going to go through and delete every single lingerie picture from my Instagram because a lot of that is who I am. I am very open and honest and like upfront about my sexuality and being open about your sexuality. That's one of my main, I mean, look at this fucking series that I'm doing. This is a passion of mine. So I kind of have the attitude and maybe it's a naive attitude, but it's the one that I have. I kind of have the attitude that if a company is not okay with who I am and what I stand for, then I don't want to work for them. Because obviously sexual education and sexual empowerment are huge parts of who I am. Um, and you know, sex work is a type of sexual empowerment for me. But that is a decision that you have to make for yourself and it's something that you really have to think about. I and mean, we've seen so many articles about like, oh my God, this teacher found out, like they found out this teacher had this OnlyFans, they found out this nurse had this OnlyFans. And it's just like, if that was you, how would you feel? And if it's bad, like do the, do the risks outweigh the reward? And that is really, if I could title this video anything, it would be OnlyFans, do the risks outweigh the reward? <laughs> so the next question that I think kind of goes along with this nicely is can you be anonymous on OnlyFans? And you definitely can. I know quite a few people and even like some like mini diva, I don't know <laughs> if you guys know like porn stars or cam stars, but mini diva, I, as far as I know, is pretty fucking anonymous. I have never once seen her face. She doesn't have any tattoos. She has just like brown hair. She's just like a brown haired white girl. Like, and she is one of the biggest names in like indie porn stars, like cam stars, uh, porn hub stars, things like that. I also know, you know, smaller, you know, not famous sex workers who have been anonymous. So, I mean, if you're obviously for me, uh, I had green and purple hair and I'm covered in tattoos. So it, people are going to know if they're going to know, but if you don't have any tattoos and you know, if you don't have any like super distinguishing features, you could absolutely do it anonymous. Speaking of buying content, let's talk pricing. You want to start an OnlyFans, but you don't know where to start as far as pricing goes. So when I was starting, I relied a lot on my friends who had OnlyFans and just the internet, Googling and figuring out, okay, well, how much should I charge? How much is normal? And I will say that the best piece of advice is do what you're comfortable with. Do what you think you are worth. But also you have to keep in mind, especially with this market being so saturated that if you're gonna charge, you know, two dollars per lingerie pick, um, the only people that are gonna buy it are people that really want to see you in lingerie because they could go to Instagram and get lingerie pics. They could go to Twitter and get fucking butthole pictures. Like, you have to keep in mind that like it's supply and demand, right? And there is no right or wrong when it comes to what to charge. Personally, if you want to know exactly what I charged, I charged basically like two to five dollars a nude descriptive nudes if i can use that word um we we're talking spicy ass nudes and again it it totally varies and that's the other thing is you don't have to have necessarily set prices i there were definitely people that i gave discounts to because they were really good subscribers there are definitely people that i hiked up the price like it you can do whatever the fuck you want on OnlyFans as far as pricing goes so do whatever you want. Pricing, as far as videos go, for a three minute video, when I started, I started by charging $17 to $25 per video. But once I gained like more videos in my like arsenal, um, that price dropped a little bit. Basically for new videos that I would take, I would charge the same like 15 to 17, but then for older videos, like videos that I just had, like OnlyFans gives you a vault and anything that you upload to OnlyFans goes into your vault. So you can basically just send old videos whenever you want, they're all right there. Videos, pictures, whatever you upload, it's all right there. So let's say I get a brand new subscriber, they really want some videos, I would send them a bunch of older videos because they haven't seen them yet and charge them like 10 to $12 per video. Editing Katie here. I knew I was gonna forget something in this video, but I really wanna talk about this. So I'm gonna just add it in right here. 
I forgot to talk about custom content because there is content that you could just recycle like I'm talking about here where you can just send to whoever you want over and over but then there's also content like where you say a person's name or whatever it is that content you could charge double for so that's another thing to keep in mind okay on with the show so it's still pretty cheap and even then like I think my prices were pretty mid-range but the other thing that I need to talk about because I don't think anybody talks about is I had people who wanted to see me naked because I had a platform <laughs> just being 100% honest people wanted to see me naked because they saw me on TikTok and they thought I was hot and they clicked the link in my bio they saw me on Instagram or they had been following me on Instagram and they wanted to see this content so I felt like I could charge a little bit more it was also $15 to subscribe so it was $15 a month plus the prices of videos um but I mean it all depends Hawk hates you um she also I'm so sorry I misgender Hawk through this entire section they use they them pronouns I'm sorry it has like um, like two million subscribers two million followers on TikTok. I subscribed to her OnlyFans to so like check it out her OnlyFans is $20 to subscribe and she sent out two videos and it was a hundred dollars to unlock the two videos so like she knows that there are people she knows that not everybody is going to be able to unlock those videos like I can't afford that I would love to see that <laughs> but uh I can't afford that so she knows that there is a supply and demand and she has the clout to you know charge those prices but that is something that I feel like people do not talk about enough at all is a lot of the people who are bragging about making like buying a house with their OnlyFans money have pretty big platforms of people who would absolutely buy their nudes so you got to keep that in mind now does that mean that you can't make a living on OnlyFans and can't make really good money on OnlyFans without a platform Absolutely not, but you have to work hard to promote your OnlyFans. So that's the question that I got a lot is, is it as easy as everybody makes it seem on TikTok? Um, yes and no. Yes, if you have some sort of following, it doesn't have to be huge. Obviously, like I didn't have that, like I don't have a huge following um, comparative to a lot of people on TikTok. If you have a following, yes, it's stupid easy. <laughs> like when I started my OnlyFans, um, I climbed to probably like 80 to 100 followers on subscribers on OnlyFans. And then I remember uh, I did like I did like a thirst trap to Scotty doesn't know on TikTok that popped off right before my account got banned, and it got on to straight male TikTok, and I gained a hundred new followers on OnlyFans just from that TikTok. It like literally doubled my my earnings on OnlyFans because a TikTok popped off. So yeah, it is stupid easy to make pretty good money on OnlyFans, but it's only easy if you have a following to just like promote it. With OnlyFans, it is so much of how hard are you willing to work um, and how, basically how much you put in is how much you're gonna get out. So for me, I still worked a full-time job. I was a content creator and not just a spicy content creator. You know, I created other content for Instagram and for um, TikTok and then I would film for OnlyFans about once a week. And in about six months of me having OnlyFans, I made about $12,000, which was, sub that's substantial money. Like, I, it basically gave me, at one point, it basically gave me another full paycheck a month from my full-time job. So it, it, you can make good money, but you also do have to budget and there's a lot of tax things you have to be concerned with. You know, a lot of people are like, oh my God, you can write, write off all your hair and all your makeup. That's not true. You can only write off stuff that you use just for OnlyFans. So if you wanna write off a whole makeup kit of makeup, you have to have a separate makeup kit that you only use for OnlyFans. Like obviously they will only know that if they audit you, but sex workers are way more likely to be audited by the IRS. And you also have to put some money, oh wait, sorry, I'm putting glue on my eyelashes. That's why I keep looking down. I would say probably like a third of the money that I made, um, I had to pay back in taxes. You also have to do quarterly taxes because you're technically self-employed and not just taxes once a year. So that like, that was really like a, oh my God, this is kind of, 
a lot for me because I started OnlyFans in the summer and then basically ended OnlyFans in like January and then it was tax season and I had figured out and I ended up I ended up just going to an H&R block with all of my taxes being like hi help me and I got this like really really sweet old man who was super helpful actually and not judgmental whatsoever so that was really good overall I personally had a pretty good damn good experience on OnlyFans. But I wanna keep talking about promotion because a lot of people had a lot of different questions about promotion. You can't have a successful OnlyFans without some sort of promotion. And like, you just, you have to. OnlyFans does not self-promote at all. You log into OnlyFans, if you were to try to see my content, all you could see is my profile picture and my like, like heading picture and that's it. So, and people obviously want to know what they're paying for. So having a Reddit, a Twitter, an Instagram, whatever it is, a TikTok, dedicated to that and promoting that is going to help you and is pretty much necessary because like OnlyFans is so saturated that you have to kind of stand out. And obviously just being who you are is going to make you stand out. Somebody asked, can big girls make money on OnlyFans? And absolutely. Fucking lootly, yes. You have to keep in mind that not everybody is attracted to one certain body type. There are areas for everybody on OnlyFans. Do not think that because you look a certain way, you can't make money on OnlyFans because you fucking can. I guarantee it. But, anyways, you do need to have some sort of account that you promote on. If you don't want to do Instagram, because Instagram and TikTok are both cracking down and that's part of the reason why I quit but we'll get into that in a second um, you can go to Twitter Twitter has a really good helpful sex worker community you can also go on reddit who also has a pretty good pretty hearty sex worker community but you also you have to build yourself up you have to build that following up you have to share for share you have to follow other sex workers and support them to get the support back you have to be posting cons consistently with hashtags and like you have to work you're building a following it takes a lot of work so if you're trying to have this as just like an on the side I don't really care what happens to it thing because that's how, how it was for me but I had a following to help me do that if you don't have that you're going to have to put in more work you guys probably know I never promoted it on Instagram. I was very, very scared of posting it on Instagram. First, because like a lot of people from like high school and a lot of family members follow me on Instagram. So like, I know my Instagram's like PG-13, but I didn't really want to make it like R. And two, I could not risk that account being banned. That account means so much to me. And if that account got banned, I would be devastated. So that's the other thing you have to keep in mind is are you willing to promote on your Instagram and potentially have it banned? That is something you have to keep in mind. So with it, it's really so much how hard you work is how much you're going to get out of it. So the last thing that I wanna talk about is why I quit doing OnlyFans. There was a couple reasons. The first, like, cause starting in like December, I started just not posting as much. Obviously, like y'all know I'm separated from Mason because of COVID and just like, I mean, Christmas during COVID was kind of fucking depressing. And I work retail, so obviously Christmas during COVID when you work retail, not a great time for mental health. So I just honestly wasn't in the mood for creating new content, really. Also, my TikTok got banned at the end of November. And obviously, that was my main form of promotion, was TikTok. And that is why my account got banned. My account got banned because I was promoting my only fans and that goes against their terms of service so it got banned so once my account got banned i didn't have a, a place where i felt comfortable promoting anymore and then on top of like my mental health being shit i just wasn't ever in the mood and then in February or March, OnlyFans changed their uh, their terms of service and now they own all of your content, which a lot of other places do, like Instagram. Instagram owns everything you post to Instagram. Uh, but what I post to Instagram is a little bit different than what I post to uh, OnlyFans and I wasn't cool with that. So that was the final like nail in the coffin for me. Would I do something similar to OnlyFans again? Absolutely. There's websites like AVN Stars. Obviously there's Pornhub, but like Pornhub is a different beast that I'm not even going to touch on today. And there's a bunch of other websites you can use that I would definitely consider using. Oh, and that's the other reason why I quit. I 
had no way of promoting it that I wasn't like willing to have banned again. Like that's why I never posted about my OnlyFans. I think I posted about my OnlyFans less than five times on my Instagram and it was only ever to my stories because like that kitty snack account, I've had that since high school. It, and obviously like that's where my following is. That's like my Instagram, my YouTube are like my two social media pillars and I was not willing to risk them to promote my OnlyFans. So that is why I quit. But honestly, y'all, it was mostly that like my mental health started going to shit and then I started like internally slut shaming myself. It just wasn't good. I was just, I got into like a really bad negative place where I just felt very, very shameful um, about myself and my body and like my sexuality. It was not very good. Um, and I'm still kind of like pulling myself out of that. I don't really know if you've been a sex worker before, if you've done OnlyFans or anything like that, if you have similar experiences, please let me know because I would love to like know that I'm not alone in that. I'm sure I am not. Um, yeah, I just got into this weird negative place where I was just like slut shaming myself all the time and I was like, this isn't cool. Um, so yeah, there was a bunch of different reasons why I quit. Also like all the taxes and everything were really overwhelming. I just got overwhelming for a lot of reasons. So that is why I quit OnlyFans, but I don't regret it. Um, I had a pretty damn good experience. All of my like subscribers were really fucking nice and really generous and really respectful and cool. I didn't have to ban or block or unsubscribe anyone. The only time so far that I know of, knock on wood, that my nudes were leaked wasn't even a nude. It was a lewd, but like I was in laundry, it was basically like what I would post on Instagram and somebody had just posted it to Reddit being like, hey, this girl has an OnlyFans and I messaged, I like messaged the, 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 the mod, the, what's the word? <laughs> I don't remember, I don't know Reddit words. The people who are in charge of the thread and were just like, hey, this is me, can I get it taken down? And it was taken down. So I got really fucking lucky so far that I know of. I mean, my, my videos could be all over Pornhub and somebody else is making money from them. I don't know, um, but that's just the risk you gotta take. But anyways, yeah, that's why I quit in a nutshell. I'm going to go do my hair real quick and then we will wrap up with some final thoughts. Okay, I don't really know what's happening with my hair, but I'm like on like day probably like six of not washing my hair. So we're, we're, make, we're making do with what we have. But overall, when it comes to OnlyFans, you really have to weigh the pros and cons. And if it's something that you're considering and if it's something you want to do, just think about, think about the future. Think about, um, you know, what your family will think if they find out because they probably will find out. Think about what future employers will think. Think about staying anonymous. If you can do that, go for it. And again, if the, if the pros outweigh the cons, then do it. If they don't, then don't. I know it's really tempting to do, especially when everybody on TikTok and Instagram like flaunts how much money they make, but you gotta keep in mind that Either they're lucky and just, you know, popped off on TikTok and, you know, has a following that wants to see them naked, or they've worked really hard, or they've worked for a long time. Like, it's not, OnlyFans isn't some miracle cure for poverty. Like, you can make good money, but it's not for nothing. You do have to work very hard. So you just have to take it all into consideration. And if you wanna do it, fucking go for it, but don't let anybody make you feel like you should be, like you should do it or like you were pressured into it because that's just, that's not, that's not how it's going to be. That's not how it needs to be. And that's just it really. I would love to hear from you if you were slash are an OnlyFans creator. And also I have to do the stereotypical YouTuber thing of these are all just my opinions of what I think about OnlyFans and what I think about people that promote OnlyFans as this like super quick, easy way to make money. It, can be but it also cannot be so it's just my opinion um but i would love to hear your opinions down below or any other questions that you have i will try to answer them um but that is all i have for today's sexy sunday thank you all so much for watching thank you all so much for supporting me and and, and giving me these questions to answer and comment down below and let me know what topic you would like my next sun sexy sunday to be about and i'll see you all in the next one Bye!